Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just a little over one month away from its official release by Disney and Lucasfilm, as well as creator J.J. Abrams and George Lucas that is all set and ready to end the sequel trilogy and the Skywalker saga itself. This is Mike Zero, make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, one thing about Episode 9 that a lot of fans are very curious about and are very excited about is, of course, exactly how Disney and Lucasfilm will utilize the characters of Rey, Kylo Ren, and even Emperor Palpatine in this movie. That's going to be quite a surreal moment, to say the least, to see on the big screen in just 32 days away from today. Now, we also know that, of course, they're going through a big phase right now of really adjusting the overall film's tone by George Lucas being on board and working around the clock with J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy, Disney, Lucasfilm to really piece the movie together before its actual premiere date and before the official release on the 19th of next month. Now, with that being said, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film. And when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for episode 9. Now specifically, what's really intriguing about all of this is that shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that both Rey and Kylo Ren are said to be inside of Palpatine's throne room, where it's described that Sidious is said to be hooked up to his large crane machine while he is laughing at both Rey and Kylo Ren. It's described that during this scene is where Palpatine is said to put both Rey and Kylo Ren into a force freeze state, where they cannot move, where they are said to be defenseless, where Sidious begins to show them a large hologram that activates in front of them, showing the First Order forces fighting the new Sith Empire, where the First Order is getting destroyed and eventually loses against the new Sith Empire. It's explained that some of the space battle sequences even reveal some of the First Order forces teaming up with the Resistance to fight the new Sith Empire. However, the First Order is said to fail and finally come to an end, and that Palpatine begins to laugh about how Snoke's legacy is now gone forever. While this happens, Palpatine is to take Rey out of the Force Freeze, where, where she's actually send, then said to be a place in a moment where Palpatine allows her to ignite her saber. This is where Palpatine brings Rey and actually begs Rey to strike him down in anger and that her journey to the dark side will finally come to an end. This is where Rey begins to see a vision of Dark Rey, where both Rey and Dark Rey are explained to fight in front of Palpatine during the scene. It's explained that Kylo Ren is not able to see the vision of Dark Rey and confused as to what Rey is experiencing. However, Kylo is able to tap into Rey's mind eventually and is able to see Dark Rey fighting Rey where she is using her double-bladed red lightsaber in the shot. It's explained that Rey begins to lock blades where Dark Rey splits her double blade into two red single-bladed lightsabers, where Rey is said to eventually gain the upper hand and cut off Dark Rey's arm from the elbow down, where she kicks her down a pit that falls down thousands of feet into the world of Exegol. This is said to be exactly what Palpatine wanted Rey to do, as she is now tapped into the dark side of the Force, where Kylo begins to warn Rey by shouting to not fall for his tricks and to listen to his voice. Here, Kylo is still not able to move, where Sidious states and asks Rey to kill Kylo Ren. This is where Rey grabs Anakin's lightsaber, where she is about to strike down Kylo, only for her to reveal to Palpatine that she was only playing along, and throws the saber at Palpatine's crane machine, causing him to fall down on the ground. This is where the Force Conduit technique begins to come into play where he rejuvenates himself by draining the energy from both Rey and Kylo Ren, where the Force ghosts of the past eventually such as Luke Skywalker and others reach out to both Rey and Kylo, where Palpatine is said to witness some of the Force ghosts in this segment, however it's said that Palpatine is able to witness Luke's Force ghost and has a small moment of seeing him where Luke will also appear later on in the battle after helping Rey some time later after Ben Solo's fall into the shadow pit that Palpatine throws him into. It's explained that this scene is very dark and gritty for Kylo Ren and Rey. So let's go over a couple of parts about this and as to why this really seems like it's going to be quite a dark Star Wars film when it comes to, of course, what J.J. Abrams is really trying to put together here for The Rise of Skywalker. Now, when we look at Episode 9 specifically, we do know that Episode 9 is going to be a movie that's going to have many different pieces of nostalgia as well as making many different risks and and providing different twists and turns that will lead to saga-wide implications within the Skywalker saga. And that to me
me, I think, is a big deal, the fact that they are going to be changing elements of the Force in Episode 9. So one aspect that I do want to actually tap into here is everything related to both Rey and Kylo Ren being locked in a Force freeze when actually confronting Palpatine in the background. Now, this is said to be the very moment in which they actually go up against Palpatine inside of his throne room, where he's actually still hooked up to that crane machine before he rejuvenates himself. He actually puts them in a force stasis technique. Now, this force stasis ability is what we saw Kylo Ren do to Poe Dameron. It's what we saw Kylo Ren do to Rey on Takadana. Same exact thing follows here between Palpatine, Rey, and Kylo Ren. Now, the thing that really excites me is that we are going to get a duel between both Rey and Dark Rey in front of both Palpatine and Kylo Ren to see and witness before their very own eyes, and that there is going to be a dismemberment in the upcoming film. We haven't actually seen anything like that in the Disney Star Wars movie as of yet, where a character will lose an arm or a leg, where in this actual fight, we're going to have a sequence in which Rey is able to literally take off of, of course, Dark Rey's right arm, kind of giving us a little bit of a call back to, you know, Luke Skywalker losing his right hand and everything related in that sense, where she eventually falls down a bottomless pit into the very depths of the world of Exegol that falls down thousands upon thousands of feet below. Now, what I like about this also is that there's also said to be a segment in which after this duel takes place between both Rey and Dark Rey, it's said to be a moment in which he taps into the dark side to destroy that potential future version of herself and that vision that she is experiencing. So what I like about that is that it kind of parallels of what Luke went through in Return of the Jedi. It is kind of a callback to what happened in Episode 6, where Luke went too far to strike down his own father, Darth Vader. And that the same exact thing follows here for the character of Rey taking down the darker version of herself to overcome her fear, but it actually leads to Rey turning down the dark path, and that's exactly what Palpatine wanted. Now, this all progresses to a moment in which the rejuvenation process begins to take place, where Palpatine is able to drain the energy from both Rey and Kylo Ren and becomes younger. Now, what I like about that too, is that this is J.J. Abrams really introducing new types of force powers that fans have never seen before in the Skywalker saga. And that's the great thing about this film so far, is that they really are trying their very best in order to introduce new types of force powers that the fans have never seen before in a Star Wars movie. So Palpatine, you can see that he really is the ultimate puppet master here, the ultimate, you know, manipulator for both Rey and Kylo Ren to literally, and, you know, quite literally here just manipulate both Rey and Kylo Ren from start to finish of the movie. Now, the other segment that I also want to go over here is the throne room. Now, in case you guys did not know, the throne room of Palpatine is actually said to be quite ancient. It actually once belonged to an ancient Sith Lord during the Old Republic era that settled over in the Unknown Regions, just near the Beyond. And the Beyond is by far the most powerful force nexus there is out of the entire galaxy that's going to be used as a way for Palpatine to use the Force Conduit ability against Rey and Kylo Ren. The thing that is really impressive about this, though, is that there is going to be a scene in which Palpatine sees the Force Ghost of Luke Skywalker once more in back of both Rey and Kylo Ren, as well as other Force Ghosts. So Force Ghosts are going to play a large role in this duel, just like how it was going to be in the original cut of Return of the Jedi back in 1983. I don't know if you guys knew this, but originally in, of course, Return of the Jedi, both Yoda and Kenobi's Force Ghosts were actually said to block the Force Lightning from Palpatine into hitting Luke Skywalker further and preventing Luke from getting killed. So we're going to see something similar in a sense to that in Episode 9 that I think is really going to be the highlight of the film. A lot of fans love Force Ghosts, and I think the fact that they are trying to evolve what Force Ghosts are able to do in the Star Wars sequel trilogy is a very, you know, difficult thing to really, you know, do in a successful way. A lot of fans were actually so-so or had mixed feelings about Yoda being able to initiate lightning from the sky hitting the tree library. So we'll have to actually wait and see exactly how it's all going to be executed on the big screen, visually speaking, in motion on an actual movie theater screen to see and determine exactly how well it actually is. So anyways, guys, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support and I'll catch you guys next time.
Thank you.